Um, almost two-thirds of the votes have been counted in the Greek referendum, and more than 60% of them say they should be saying no. So more than 60% of them say no. Uh, but no to what exactly? Even our expert doesn't fully understand exactly what they're voting no to. New Zealand Initiative Executive Director Oliver Hartwich joins me from Wellington. Oliver, great to have you on the programme again. This was... This was such a complex, illogical question. How could anyone in Greece have understood it? Well, I didn't understand it, at least, because the question was really about a proposal that was withdrawn on a bailout package that no longer existed. So it really didn't make any sense at all. You really had to interpret what this question might mean if you really wanted to cast your vote properly. All right. So if we look at the recommendation from the Prime Minister that, that Greece should vote no, in fact, the government wholeheartedly were behind no, really what they're after is the ability to gain more, um, more traction, really, with the EU, isn't it? I mean, they're holding them to ransom to effect. That was the idea. Basically, uh, the Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, he really wanted to have his cake and eat it. So basically his proposal was, look, we just want to keep getting all the money from the European Union we can get. Uh, we want to be bailed out. We want to get money from the European Central Bank to keep our banks afloat. And in return, we're precisely offering zilch, nothing because uh, he didn't want to play by the European Union's rules, he didn't want to impose austerity, he didn't want to reform the economy, and that's what he campaigned for, and 60% of the Greeks said yes to that. Everything comes down, it would appear, to Angela Merkel, who's made it clear that she is losing patience with the Greeks, but losing patience and actually allowing them to leave or forcing them out of the EU are two very different things. What do you think the most... I mean, obviously, we're, gonna, we're heading for a no vote. What's the most likely outcome? Well, I think she's uh, losing patience, as you say, but she's probably been losing patience for about five years because it's been dragging on for all this time. The most likely outcome is that um, they will try to renegotiate something with the Greeks. Uh, Alexis Tsipras believes that actually this vote strengthens his negotiating position. I think somebody needs to tell the Greek prime minister he should stop dreaming because what he's actually done over the past six months is actually he's burned all his bridges in Europe. Mm -hmm. He basically um, unilaterally declared this referendum without even consulting any of his European partners. So if he really thinks that this position actually now strengthens him, I think he's totally wrong and deluded. But is he actually the clever one, Oliver? I mean, are they going to get away with this? I mean, effectively, have they held the EU to ransom? They can't get away with it because that would actually set a precedent. And it's not just the Germans who are rightfully annoyed. Think about the Irish, think about the Spanish, mm, the Portuguese. Mm. They all received money from the European unions and they played by the rules. So they accepted the austerity mandate. They reformed the economies. If the Greeks now get a deal by just saying no to austerity, I think Spain, Ireland and Portugal will be most annoyed. Given the size of the debt held against Greece now, there is no way, Oliver, they can trade their way out of that. No way. So surely the only logical thing for the EU to do, if they want to avoid a precedent, is chuck them out. Yes, but as you know, I mean, the European Union was never really founded on logic alone. It's a political construct. And for political reasons, they started monetary union. For political reasons, they got Greece involved in it. And for political reasons, they might not keep them in. But it doesn't make any sense. To, whenever you're talking about the European Union, you shouldn't really talk to an economist. You should probably just talk to an astrologer instead. <laughs> oh, that's very damning. That is a very damning assessment. Um, Oliver, at the end of the day, the European Union is monstrous. They have a huge combined income. They could just continue to quietly prop Greece up for eternity, couldn't they? Is that a possible outcome here? Uh, it is a possible outcome, and you're right. It is a small economy, and the amounts required, they are manageable. But really, it's about the precedent, really. Because if you're doing that to Greece, uh, you're basically asking the other countries to do the same. And Spain will go to the polls later this year, and they will be asking exactly the same questions that the Greeks are asking. And there is a movement in Spain called Podemos that is now campaigning exactly on the Syriza mm -hmm. platform. So they are trying to get more money. So if you allow the Greeks to get away with that, you're asking for more trouble down the track. OK, and then we sort of head towards contagion, which is the thing we're all trying to uh, trying to avoid. All right, so very quickly to end this, Oliver, um, and it's hard to imagine we can ever end anything that involves Greece, but very quickly to end it, in one month's time, where do you imagine Europe and Greece will be? 
probably not much further. I mean, they are one step from the abyss. They might be a step further, if that's what you mean. But really, um, they have to repay about 3 billion euros to the European Central Bank on the 20th of July. I've got no idea how they're going to get the money. And I've got no idea that how once they default it to the ECB, after defaulting already to the International Monetary Fund, the ECB will actually keep the life support going. So I would expect that uh, the banks will remain closed, the stock exchange will remain closed. And I think this country is heading for chaos. Oliver, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Oliver Hart, which executive director of the New Zealand Initiative.